Surviving storms. Surviving storms. Surviving storms. River taught us something, eh? Mm -hmm. River taught us something. It's crazy to think that something so small and peaceful can be so destructive. Well, from now on, when, when, the, when the strangers come and they used to say we don't have a river, we have ravine. Mm -hmm. Well, Maria taught us what river is. Definitely. And that is a lesson for us, mm -hmm. especially planning, housing and planning department, division. For having sold land to people, and then people have to end up in all these calamities when a natural disaster occurs. Okay. So, what is your livelihood? Can you tell us about that? Um, well, since Maria, see, well, the year of Maria 2017, mm -hmm. um, I worked for many years at an office in Tong, but then the place had closed down at the end of 2016. So for mm -hmm. 17, I had just started doing a bit of um, work at the ferry terminals mm -hmm. and at the cruise ship booth. So a bit into tourism. Mm -hmm. That's what I have been doing. And then, well, you know, when Maria came, all that had to stop. Yeah. And then we started again afterwards, but then COVID came and no work. So for now, I'm an unemployed person for a little while now. <laughs> so we can see that your livelihood has been affected by not just Maria, but COVID as well. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Because you can see, I was trying to fix up my little place a mm -hmm. little bit at a time since Maria. Yeah. Because before Maria, well, I had this little piece. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God we had the little um, decking, so nothing really happened to that little piece that we had done. But then the front, we had a wooden structure there and, you know, that, that was gone. So after Maria, and then there was no work for a while because the tourists and so on. But then when, when, when the little business came back, I started doing something again, but then COVID came, bam! And that, that was an abrupt end to my building. Um, my little building plans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but as Adam said resilience we have life mm -hmm. and that's the most important Adam, oh he always does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you and well, the people of your community heal or recover from the experiences of Maria well people recover there as far as I can see, people recovered. Mm -hmm. And what I think about black people and resilience, and not just black people, now I think is minority, people that are, that are not very wealthy. Well, there was an old saying that um, necessity is the father of invention. Mm -hmm. And when people don't have all what they would like to have, you know, they find ways to get things done. And... So the people, they went through a lot, especially those who lost their property, their, their life. Their, people lost their lives, people lost their loved ones, and people lost their property. But I know it affected some of the older ones differently. The, young, the younger generation, well, you know, once you had a simple life and you had contentment in your life, you know, I guess we all realize that we, you know, we have to get up and do what we have to do. Black people, we had a, our history of slavery. I guess that built resilience in, 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 in the black nation because, you know, our ancestors went through so much and yet still they stood up and we are here, we are their descendants and we are up to today. So that is resilience already. So I guess it's in our blood. And um, so people, people had bunked back. I mean, we're accustomed to a hard life. You know, we're accustomed. But one advantage we have is that God has blessed the land. God blessed the land all over the place, but especially Dominica. Because anything, they said, once a seed is spat out, it grows in Dominica. So even if Maria took you know, 
most of what we had but you know see there's a, a coconut tree in the bush up there there is a, a mango tree survived in the by the river over there a breadfruit tree survived down there by the church so you know these little things people go around and they make themselves and as long as we have contentment we have hope we have hope we have life we have hope that's how i see it so but one thing i have to say I lost my father after Maria. I didn't, he didn't die because of the hurricane. He died in February the year after. But I think that um, Maria had a lot to do with it. First of all, hurricane, um, tropical storm Erica in, in 2015. He experienced that, we all experienced that. And he was in daily seas at that time because of his family, my family is from daily seas. I remember my, when my father came down, my father told me, Priscilla, I have never seen anything like that in my life. He was in his 70s. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like that in my life. And um, so he would, Maria. Erica, oh, Erica. Erica. Mm -hmm. And he would talk about that all the time because the experiences they went through, you know, how pe people had to come to Roseau to see what they could get when, when they would have to cross that gorge, go down into that gorge, come up, climb up. Then some buses would pick them up from there. But when they come back with their goods, they had to go back down through that gorge, cross the river and climb back up that over 100 feet. And then later we saw that um, some persons invented that... Uh, a kind of a tram where they could send their load from one side of of the gorge to the other side of the gorge and then they would walk across so necessity is the father of invention that happened there resilience again um but from that time you know he, he would always contemplate on these things and tell me priscilla two years later maria came i think erica was a, a warning a, for, a forewarning for us because I mean we've always been hearing about the climate change, climate change, climate change but I think Eric, I think because of Erica a lot of lives were saved during Maria mm -hmm. because for Erica these rivers they showed themselves you know these two rivers in Lubia they showed themselves for Erica so when Maria came it was worse it was worse so when my father saw all what was happening and everywhere he go and when he come back he said Priscilla let me tell you what I see today and it's like he couldn't stop talking about about these things and I think it had an effect on his heart and then he didn't he, he didn't live too long after that but the other thing that took me is that after Maria eh, the among the people that died mm -hmm. there were deaf announcements 12 14, 16, sometimes 20 deaf announcements after from the period of September, yeah. October, November, December into halfway of 2018. Mm -hmm. Especially the people, Mamatio people, they were dying, they were dying. So I think Maria had a lot to do with a loss of lives, even if we didn't have all that during the hurricane, but after the hurricane, the effects with the older people so I, I don't think it, it is that they I don't think it is that they will you know mourning the loss of the things they, they lose you know I think it was just because of the shock like my father it was it was like a shock and then their lifestyles changed you know, maybe they had their little independence and then when that happened, they had to go live with people. And because in my father's case, that happened. Mm -hmm. He lost his house and so on. And he so, lived his garden as well, right? He oh! Took Erica, nice. took, Erica took half of the garden and Maria took the rest of the garden. Mm -hmm. Because after Maria, he told me, Priscilla, all you can come up there now, no? All you can come up there. There's in a state. All you can come up there now. And he used to grow plenty before, man? But we will self self sustain our Zion feeders. The garden is all your garden. <laughs> right. So he he had planted here after I, when I bought the piece of land, you know, he planted around. So up to now I can eat 
from things that he planted, but he had his eye on. Where anybody in the village who wanted something, they could, they were welcome to come up and get stuff. That's what my father was. But, but as I was saying, a lot of the old elder people, I think because they lose their independence, you know, their comfort. Some people, they had their homes, they say, oh, well, I retire now, that's it. But then they, their house went, so then they had to start all over again. But what I, what I think was lacking in a way to the topic of resilience, I think that when people go through this kind of traumatic experiences, psychological help, we, we didn't have that. We didn't have that. A lot of people, they didn't have, I mean, we would, everybody talked to each other, everybody went through it, they expressing themselves, but when you think of the elderly person, you know, sitting in a strange place because they lose their home and they're contemplating all these things, and sometimes they don't have the people to talk to, especially they haven't got a psychology. They haven't got somebody that come and sit down like you sitting down with me now and you come and ask me questions and we're talking. Other people, they didn't have that. So I think that is a need. That, that's a need that we, we, we should put, in thing, put things in place that whenever there's a traumatic experience, that, um, that psychological health will be available to people. I think that was lacking. That's one of the most important things I was lacking. Because on, a, on another note, my, my father, I remember a certain time after Maria, certain, they say a couple of months, he keeps, saying, he keeps saying to me, Priscilla, we haven't got somebody overseas. We can just leave and go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he got fed up with, you know, the way things were and you know, so all this is all these psychological things, you know, because if he really needed to go, just like right now where we have St. Vincent and the, vol and the volcano, mm -hmm. right now they have people that want to go. The other Caribbean countries say, you can come. So maybe we could have had something like that too. I mean, there are people, you have your people, you live and you go. After Hurricane David, a lot of people left, you know, Hurricane Erica, when it damaged um, those villages. So who could have left? They left. I remember after Erica, I met a young man from that village I was washed away. And he had lost all his family members. Eh? He, he said, I see my brother die. I see my father. I see my mother die right in front of me. Because remember, the landslide came down and they were all trapped. They were all trapped in, in, the, in the mud. And well, thankfully, people came and they pulled him out in time. But his, his parents were right around him, his family, and they died. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this thing should be, well, I can't say it should be available because I mean, the other governments do see it as their responsibility, but just like that volcano is erupting right now, and like Dominica, we said, yes, we can have some. And even if COVID going on, yes. that's, I find that's a good thing that they offer. So if we had that, at least when my father said, Priscilla, isn't that somewhere we can go? You know, at least we would have taken the opportunity and go for a few months, and maybe that could have helped him heal his heart. No, but then he had to just stay in it, and then, mm. yeah. Mm. I understand. So, tell me, how are you thinking of preparing for the upcoming hurricane season? <laughs> well, my child, what I can tell you is, once I had a hurricane coming, I come out from there. Because mm. we have that ridge, we have that um, Laho ridge mm. right above us there. And we got a lot of landslides, you know, but the good thing is there were a lot of trees. So the, it seems the wind threw down the trees first. And then when the stones and mud came down, the trees held it up, you know, on the road. Because the roads were blocked and everything, but, but the mud didn't come down, you know. So I think that was, that was a good help for us. So I said, me, anytime I hurricane coming again, me, I, even if it's in the hurricane shelter, if I can go by a neighbor, or a friend, or else I'll find myself in the hurricane shelter in Lobie, yes. because I don't think I will stay here if a hurricane is coming. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Is there mm -mm. anything else you learned from Hurricane Maria? Anything else you taught you? Well, Hurricane Maria should have taught us a lot, eh? 
um, that climate change is real but how I see it as somebody who believes in what the Bible says I see it as the sign of the last days because all over the world there's not natural disasters are happening all over the world climate change is taking place before hurricane season was say one time to another or rainy season I remember as a child the rainy season used to come from maybe June I mean, it would come June, July, and then it would hold up for the summer. We had nice summer holidays. And then when school was opening in September, everybody had to have their raincoat and their umbrella. Because we know it would be rain until the end of the year. But now, things just turn because we don't, we, we don't even have a kawem. Before we had kawem from March to May, it was kawem season. But now we, we, we don't have that many times. All through kawem, we would get one or two weeks of kawem and then rain again. So, I see it as, you know, the sign of the times. Climate change is part of the sign of the times, you know. So people need to always ask themselves a question because we don't know what will happen tomorrow. We don't know what, 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 what the life will bring. But we, um, we, we have to listen to what the Bible say and we have to prepare ourselves because the end is nigh, mm -hmm. or even if the end is not nigh, even if the end, you might think the end is not nigh, our end could be the end of our life because see the among people that just died during, during Erica. Look at the people in Point Michelle in that house. Mm -hmm. And Point Michelle, Hurricane Erica, no, I just got some Erica, mm -hmm. and that Wavin in Point Michelle. That, Erica did so many things to that Wavin. And the people mean to tell me they stayed in that ravine and Hurricane Maria just washed away three generations of a family. We have to ask ourselves a lot of questions. We have to ask ourselves a lot of questions and we have to just try and live a good live good with everybody else. You know, we have to live good with everybody else on the earth is our neighbor. That's all we have to consider. What what I would like done to me, that's how I have to treat you. That's how I see it. And hurricane, the hurricanes, the disasters, the volcano, all of them, they are teaching us that lesson. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, we know the Bible say how people, the attitude of people in the last days. Eh? But we, on each one of us individually, we can ask ourselves a question. Mm -hmm. That's what I see.